are in the second week of our series called Wise, and we are talking about what it means to be wise and how we can gain and use wisdom in every situation we're in. So how about it? Let's start with the game, wise or not wise. So tell me when I say these things, if it's wise or not wise. First, labeling things that belong to you. Is it wise or not wise? Well, it's wise, of course. You want to label things that belong to you, and that way, if it gets lost, you can find them. How about this? Eating ice cream right before bedtime. Well, it might seem wise because it's yummy, but sometimes I wake up with a bellyache in the middle of the night because I have that much sugar, so it's probably not wise. All right, next, studying a little bit every day before a big test. I would say that one was wise. That way, I don't have to cram the night before or the day before. How about lending a pencil to a classmate who forgot to bring theirs? Is that wise or not wise? That would be a wise thing to do, right? What about waiting to finish a project until the last minute? That would totally not be wise because what if you don't have the materials? Or what if you forget to do something? If you do it beforehand, you can make sure you have everything and make sure you do everything that you're supposed to do. Just like reading the instruction manual before you try to do something, right? That would be wise. What about telling a friend you think that their haircut is really nice when you don't think it is? Is that wise? or not wise, that would be wise. Or maybe not even saying anything, or just saying, hey, I see you got a haircut. That could be wise. Next one and last one, what about informing an adult when someone is doing something you think is dangerous? Is that wise or not wise? That's wise. It's always important to tell someone when you think something is dangerous. Well, Sunday we learned about how wise Solomon was and how he built a temple to hold the Ark of the Covenant. Do you remember what was inside the Ark of the Covenant? That's right, a pot of manna, Aaron's sword, and the tablets with the Ten Commandments. Exodus 21 through 20 is where the Ten Commandments are found. Do you remember what they are? Let's see. Have no other gods before me. Have no idols. Don't worship any other gods. Don't use the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Don't testify falsely against your neighbor. That means don't tell tattletales on them that aren't true. Or don't desire your neighbor's house. So which one do you think is the most important? Well, I think all of them are if they're rules from God, right? But which one do you think is the hardest to follow? Um, I don't think they're on any harder than the other. I think they're pretty easy to follow if we all follow them right. Okay, so who's ready to see how Carl explains this one? This story about how wise Solomon was building a temple to hold the Ark of the Covenant. He's so silly. Let's sit back and watch. Hey there, you little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Cassie. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me? I said, okay, Cassie, if that even is your real name. Is something wrong? <sighs> nope. Nothing's wrong. Roll the intro! Welcome to Bro TV. Introducing your host, Carl. And your co-host, Cassie. Where we learn, where we grow, and we talk about Jesus. Once again, welcome to Grow TV. Today's a special day because we're going to talk about a little thing called trust. Ooh, I'm excited. Are you now? Yeah. Interesting, because I thought you might have a problem with the word trust. Why would you say that? 
Oh, I don't know. A few things come to mind. How about last week when we did our trust ball? Listen, you can't just yell trust ball as you're falling it and expect me to catch you. If you would have told me before, I probably would have caught you. Oh, I'm sure. What about that one time you told me to touch fire? Can I touch this? No. Go? No. You said go? I said no. Okay, go. I told you not to touch it. Well, that's your opinion. Anyways, even this morning, you broke my trust again. How? Well, last night I had a bag of candy, and I put it right here. And this morning I came, and guess what? They were gone? They were gone! And by the way, how did you know that? Hmm? Busted. Get them, boys. What? No, listen, Carl. I don't know who took them, but I didn't take them. I wouldn't steal from you. We're friends. I know that, but I just feel like I can't trust anyone right now. I understand, but you know who you can trust? Captain America? No, God. You see, in the Old Testament, there was something called the Ark of the Covenant. It was like a huge box, but it was so much more than a box. It had the presence of God, and wherever it was, God was there. It also symbolized God's promises that were made, and how all of them came true. Wow! So what did they do with the Ark of the Covenant? They brought the Ark into a new temple King Solomon had made. You remember Solomon, right? He asked God for wisdom, and God gave it to him. In fact, Solomon became the wisest person in the whole world. Is that why he built the temple? That's part of it. But before that, God promised Solomon's father, David, that one of his children would become king and build the temple. And that was Solomon. Solomon wanted to show God how thankful he was that all of God's promises had come true. That's cool. I also remember that verse in Proverbs chapter 3. It tells us to trust God with all our heart, not to lean on our own understanding. Exactly. When we trust God, we will not only receive more forgiveness and love, but we will become more wise. I guess you're right. Thanks for understanding. I guess it's good to know that God can be trusted. Hey, that's our big idea. What? Oh! <laughs> that's our big idea! Today's big idea is super important. Yep, it's that God can be trusted. So on the count of three, let's all say it together. One, two, three. God, God can be trusted. trusted. And you can trust that. That God can be trusted. Yes. Good job, everyone. Right? Right. right. Trust in God. So Carl. Yes, Cassie? Just know, just like you didn't trust me, there might be times where it's hard for us to trust God, but always know that you can talk to God and the trust will come. Thanks, Cassie. I guess I'll never know who ate my bag of candy. Hey, Garth. What are you eating? Candy. Where did you get it? Plenty of stuff. Right where you're sitting. It's crazy. Like right here? Yeah. Carl, breathe. <laughs> yeah. That's my candy, you fool! See you next week. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. Not Carl, he's so silly. Who's ready for study questions? Okay, study question one. Why did King Solomon build the temple? Well, he wanted a place for people to go and have relationship with God and a place for the Ark of the Covenant to have a forever home, a place where it to be sacred and safe. That's why. Well, I already gave you the answer to this one. What was put in the holiest place inside the temple? That's right, the Ark of the Covenant. So question three, why did Solomon say that God could be trusted? Well, it tells us here, in 1 Kings 8, verses 14 through 16, it says, The king turned around 
And while the entire assembly of Israel was standing there, the entire assembly, first he blessed them. And he said, bless Israel's God, the Lord who spoke directly to my father. And now he's kept his promise. From this day, I brought my people of Israel out of Egypt. What he's saying is, he's telling his people how he kept his promise. And he's telling his people how God always keeps his promises. And that's why Psalm is saying God can be trusted because he always keeps his promises. First Kings 8, 23 through 26 says, he said, Lord God of Israel, there's no God like you in heaven above or on the earth below. You keep your covenant and show loyalty to your servants who walk before you with all your heart. This is the covenant you kept with your servant David, my father, which promised you promised him. And today you fulfilled what you promised. So now, Lord Israel's God, keep what you promised my father David, your servant. When you said to him, you will never fail to have a successful sitting on Israel's throne as long as your descendants walk carefully before me, just as you walked before me. So now, God of Israel, may your promise to your servant David, my father, come true. So God kept his promise to David and Solomon. What is one way that God has kept his promise that he made to you? So tell me, is there somebody that you have that you can trust the most, like a best friend or your mom or your dad, or maybe an aunt or your uncle. I have an aunt that I call and tell everything to. Anytime something happens, big or small or sad or happy, I call her all the time and tell her. What about you? Do you have somebody? Well, what makes it easier or harder to trust someone? Well, it always helps if they trust you too, that always helps. And it always helps if they're caring and loving. So how can we be trustworthy to people? How can we show people that we are trustworthy? Well, we show them love. We show them that we care and we show them that we can be trustworthy. We don't tell them, we don't tell other people their secrets, right? And we show them that we can be trusted with what they have to tell us or jobs or things that they trust us to do for them, right? As long as they're not dangerous. So we don't use the kind of tablets that Moses used for the Ten Commandments. But today, um, you guys could make something that's like that. I have activity that you guys could do that I would totally do with you guys if we were together was take a piece of paper and use a white crayon or even some Elmer's glue and draw on it. Let the glue dry, if that's what you're using, and then take watercolor and color over it and see what kind of design you can make. It's so cool. Try it out and see what you come up with. Show me your pictures when you make it. Send me a picture or show it to me when you come to church on Sunday. I'm interested to see what you make. All right, guys, I've had a great Wednesday with you. Let's end our time in prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for reminding us that you keep every promise that you made to David and Solomon and that you will keep the promises that you made to us too. Please help us learn to be trustworthy and help us to know that you can always be trusted. Help us to make wise decisions that make you happy. Please be with us as we go through our week and bless our friends, our family, be with us as we do everything we do this week and let your words come out of our mouth and let us show your love through our actions. In your name I pray, amen. All right guys, have a great week and I'll see you on Sunday.